this notion that somehow I can just change the laws unilaterally is just not true. The fact of the matter is there are laws on the books that I have to enforce. Uh, and I think that the, 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 there's been uh, a great disservice done to the cause of getting the DREAM Act passed and getting comprehensive immigration passed by perpetrating the notion that somehow by myself I can go and do these things. It's just not true. All right, now, believe it or not, that was President Obama speaking only nine months ago about his inability to unilaterally suspend the deportation of illegals here in America. But now, in an election year miracle, there are seemingly no limits to the powers that he has as he's now ordered Homeland Security to no longer defend the law of the land simply so he can win over the support of Hispanic Americans. Joining me now with reaction to this unprecedented power grab is the former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Governor, I, I, I could play cut after cut of him saying that he can't do this, but he did it last Friday. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I don't know if it's unprecedented power grab because we've seen him do this over and over again and with other aspects of policy that he has mandated uh, to the citizens of America with Obamacare and with usurping 10th Amendment rights of our states and Commerce Clause and so many other things. This is par for the course for President Obama is not respecting the balance of power in our federal government, not understanding at all the constitutionality of the three branches of government and he just deciding via fiat, via his own powerful volition that he will tell the American people what he deems is best, despite the fact that it violates um, all those things aforementioned. I'm a little bit surprised, considering we have co-equal branches of government, his own recognition that Congress passes the law, president signs it into law, that he doesn't have the power. He says he wished he had the power uh, to unilaterally uh, just decide these laws are null and void, that he does it anyway, and just totally ignoring checks and balances, that there's not more outrage about this. Are you, are you surprised about that? There should be more outrage. You know what we need to do? If he truly was this constitutional scholar and professor, though now we find out he wasn't really a professor, he was a guest lecturer at, at a, a school or two, we need to go uh, speak to some of the students whom he uh, lectured and taught and ask them if they understand that he didn't know what he was talking about when he told them, if he evidently did, that uh, the executive branch would be able to usurp and um, ignore the other branches of government and the powers vested in them. The students got ripped off in their courses if President Obama taught them what he is doing to the rest of America today. You know, Governor, we have, uh, Governor, we have this issue, a really fundamental issue about the balance of power and co-equal branches of government. Big issue. We have a big issue where our government is providing guns to cartels and American law enforcement are being killed with those guns. We have literally high level national security leaks coming right out of the White House. And I read the media and it focuses on you and you gave a very important speech and I watched a good portion of it. And people say, well, Governor Palin didn't mention Mitt Romney not one time in that speech. Um, what do you think of that reaction? Because I, I figured with all that's going on, don't we have more important things for the media to cover than whether or not you mentioned Governor Romney in his speech? Is, and you told me there's a reason for that. There was a reason I did not mention Governor Romney in my speech at the Americans for Prosperity Foundation event and right online over the weekend. And that's because I would have violated the ground rules for Americans for Prosperity Foundation. You couldn't um, violate their, I don't know if it's a 501c3, whatever the, the classification is uh, of their organization. No one mentioned uh, Governor Romney in their speeches nor endorsed anybody because that wasn't what the conference was about. My, in my role, as a matter of fact, in the conference was to point out the hypocrisy, the double standards, and the weakness of the old media and how the new citizen journalist media can rise up and take the place of what the old media used to represent, and that is telling the truth and the facts to voters. All right, but just for the record, you are fully and completely on board, and you are supporting Governor Romney in his effort to unseat President Barack Obama. 
I have said from day one, and Sean, I think that you have uh, said the exact same thing. It's been anybody but Obama. We have a presumption nominee now in the GOP process after a good, competitive, and very spirited uh, competition to find that presumptive nominee. And uh, yes, if, if that vote were to be taken today, obviously I would vote for President for Governor Romney over President Barack Obama in a heartbeat. I wouldn't blink uh, because it, I, I go back to what I said at the beginning. Anybody but Obama. All right. It seems like there's going to be this is going to be a choice election. I think we're at a tipping point as a country. I'm going to ask you about that when we get back. We'll have more. And we continue now with former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Governor, um, Senator Cornyn has suggested that uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, resign. Uh, a couple of issues he's now facing. One is the failure to appoint a special prosecutor in the leak scandal, national security leaks making the president look good, and the other has to do with the Fast and Furious, we're providing guns to these cartels. Here's what Daryl Issa said after a year and a half of stonewalling uh, as it relates to the attorney general. Let me play it for you. He came with an offer uh, of a briefing. Uh, we uh, went through the process of what was being offered. Uh, and responded as I think we have to, which is that the documents that they may choose to give in the future, we need to have before tomorrow. Ultimately, the documents necessary to cause a postponement appear to be in their possessions. We're hoping that we have them tonight. Uh, if we can evaluate them even partially, then that will give us grounds to, uh, uh, to negotiate a postponement and perhaps a final resolution. How big are these two scandals in your estimation? It's disgraceful what our attorney general's efforts have been to, again, usurp the power, the authority of another branch of government. Absolutely disgraceful. Can you imagine if it were President Bush and his attorney general who chose to stonewall and not provide for the people's representatives on this committee, a congressional committee, the information that they are due? And here it's been a year and a half of this stonewalling and it ignoring and kind of an in-your-face jab, that proverbial jab against the people that uh, the, our attorney general has continued to um, engage in, disgraceful. You know, Governor, as, as you have spoken and, and reflected back on the 2008 campaign and you've spoken out about it, uh, you felt that, that really the McCain-Palin ticket was too easy on Barack Obama. We're 140 days out of this election. What would be your advice? If Governor Romney's watching or listening tonight or his campaign, what is your advice to them this time around? Don't do what we did in holding back uh, the information that the people deserve to hear. And it wasn't Senator McCain who chose to hold back information regarding a, a, a a sitting state senator who is running for president, the highest office in the land, and his voting record, and his statements, and his past associations, and present associations, and his pals. You cannot hold back vetted information that is so necessary in order for the electorate to make a good decision. We are finding so much now about now President Barack Obama and his past and present associations with anti-American, shoot, Marxist professors whom he sought out very proudly and, and aggressively sought out to learn from. We learn so much now about who and what shaped President Barack Obama and some of the socialist ideas of his that sir, they fail in other countries and they will fail here in this well, country. We find out about those, Sean, today and uh, now, it, you know, it, it's too late four years later. So for Governor Romney and for his staff that needs to be very, very aggressive and not hold back on information Is that it, they will uncover. We need to make sure, in fairness to the electorate, that they are giving all the information. Isn't the big difference, though, is that this time, so Barack Obama was sort of an unknown, and he had a speech, and, and maybe the moment was right, and he stuck to his message for the most part. The media went along without vetting him. Is, is, the, is the biggest political weapon they have his record, his failed record? And how much do you focus on that? 
Absolutely, it is, it is the record, but it's also those elements of his life that went into shaping him. It, uh, obviously, much of that has to do with his education and that seeking out of Marxist professors whom he wanted to surround himself with and the teachings that they provided him. But his failed record as our president now, um, that certainly needs to be uh, the, the ammunition, if you will, I'm not inciting violence, but the ammunition, if you will, against our sitting president when it, it we go to consider who the next president should be. And yes, it is the lapdogs in the media who were so personally and emotionally invested in, at the time, candidate Obama, that they couldn't then allow truth to be revealed about who he was, what he represented, what his what his past record was. Um, but uh, so many, even in the media today, have seen the light and understand that um, for uh, this republic to be defended, we need to make sure that all candidates are vetted. All right, Governor, it's always great to have you. Thank you so much for uh, being with us. And